Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are we all tonight? I hope we're well. Um, so I'm back home now, it's been about about 10 weeks I think um, since I uh, come, well yeah, uh, just, just arrived home today. I was at my parents' place uh, looking after them and ensuring they're okay and stuff through this crisis we've had and obviously also because I didn't want to be at home particularly on my Todd since I live on my own here in this flat. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to starting uh, hopefully a video per day on the on these Gnostic subjects, some historical, some you know, mythological, uh, but a lot to do with esoteric law. Um, and I wanted to start today by furnishing you guys with some um, some of the hidden details here that are that are in the uh, Old Testament. Um, and the difficulties finding the patriarchs of the Old Testament, David, Solomon, Abraham, and so on. Um, but in, you know, you, which you can actually find if you look in the right places. Um, I'm going to take a little butchers here. It's some knowledge that's been pretty well known for quite a while, but just um, only in uh, some pretty elite circles. And uh, to the historians that have really bothered to, to flesh out uh, what is what there and and make the parallels that need to be made to uh, establish the patriarchs of the Bible in, in you know f uh, to insert them back into the historical record most Christians do not know this stuff um, but it is uh, what we're going to do here is look through some of the similarities between the Hyksos pharaohs or the Hikakashut um, the Hyksos is the Greek um, Hikakashut is the older Egyptian, I think, uh, terminology, and it does carry through to another a couple of uh, languages there. I think the Syrian, sorry, the Assyrian is very similar, but I will double check that, and you might see a correction at the bottom of the video when it's come out. Um, and all with these lovely visuals that I'm going to make for you and edit together after I've um, given this little presentation. Um, and I want to talk about Mam Abra and David, King David and Solomon as well. Um, but first of all, yeah, let's go through the Hyksos. So I'm going to take a, this a little reading here from uh, Ralph Ellis's book. Uh, it's called Temple and Exodus. And he's quite conveniently given us some information on the uh, the Hyksos here and their relationship to the Israelites and it's rather clear that these parallels uh, being as they are 19 um, are rather more um, considerable in number that they, they do indeed give you the true uh, source so the true um, identity here the, 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 the sorry the patriarchs of the Old Testament it's not likely that you would find so many um, of these similarities, as well as the names of these patriarchs. I might do them in uh, another another video, make this uh, maybe a three-part. Um, and also a lot of the sorry, hang on, archaeological evidence as well, which converges so neatly in Egypt, um, while there is absolutely no information at all, no archaeology about the patriarchs actually ever living in in Israel. Um, this was, of course, the Hyksos are a, a mid um, to late dynastic um, lineage of pharaohs. They were called the foreigners or the invaders. Hyksos means the foreigners um, or the for foreigners, I think, of the mountainous lands. Um, and they they infiltrated, if you like, or, or probably didn't not invading, as Minitho says, um, quite quite so much as just uh, insinuating themselves into Egypt and causing a hell of a lot of trouble for the Thebian Egyptians, the um, Yapis bull worshippers, and of course installing Ram worship, which is interesting because of course the patriarchs and, and Ram symbology is very prominent uh, you get the shofar of course abraham ram and so on the the the, the connections are, well, are myriad um but let's go through this list here and it's going to be i'm going to give the a's and the b's um 
A is going to be the Egyptian uh, lines, and then we're going to talk about the Hyksos in the Bs. Um, and I've got the, you should see the book and the, the um, yeah, the information just in front of you here. I'm going to read them for you. Um, item, so we're going to go through the, the Egyptians, sorry, the Israelites here. I'm just going to read it and you'll figure it out. Items from the various religious texts about the Israelites and B, the Egyptians. Items from historical accounts about the Hyksos, mainly from the books of the ancient historian Josephus and uh, Manetho. So here we go. A, the biblical patriarchs were both shepherds and kings. The Hyksos were also shepherd kings. The Israelites introduced religious uh, innovations into Egypt. The Hyksos introduced religious innovations into Egypt. Okay, here we are. The, uh, they had a vast army. Abraham had 318 army officers and about 10,000 men. The Hyksos, uh, they had a vast army with chariots, horses and body armor. Uh, they adopted Egyptian names and customs. Joseph, Joseph sorry, was Somoth, uh, Fanish, or Patasef. Moses was either Moses or Osiriseth. Or Osiriseth. Or they adopted, is the, um, the Hyksos, they adopted Egyptian names and customs. They were skilled um, in astronomy and science. Uh, they celebrated, this is B, the... Um, Oh, Jesus Christ. The fucking. The. Uh, the. Hyksos, was it? They celebrated. The yeah, Rhind Mathematical Papyrus is a Hyksos document. The document. Now this is where you, I think you get um, uh, algebra from this document. This is an early form of algebra. And it's not Muslim, by the way. Uh, the document, although found in Thebes, it was dated to the 33rd year of Al Sura. Al Sura. This dating of the papyrus to the reign of a Hyksos pharaoh clearly shows it to have originally been a Hyksos document. Uh, they ruled Egypt. Joseph was chief vizier to Pharaoh. Moses was uh, the adopted son of Pharaoh Abraham. Uh, hang on, of a pharaoh. Sorry. Abraham was also a king. Uh, they ruled Egypt as pharaohs. They indeed did. Many plagues afflicted the Egyptians, according to the Tempest Stella. Uh, many plagues may have afflicted the Egyptians. Again, this is a a um, perfectly parallel piece of history. Um, there was a famine. In, uh, there was a famine, indeed, in both um, these uh, dynasties' histories. Uh, they were involved in a war with the Egyptians. The Israelites killed thousands of Egyptians and destroyed their cities. They were involved in a war with the Egyptians. The Hyksos killed thousands of Egyptians and destroyed their cities. There was a great exodus of the Israelite shepherds. Uh, there was a great exodus of the Hyksos shepherds. They left the town of Avaris in the Nile Delta region, Pai Ramses. They left the town of Avaris in the Nile Delta region. Uh, the number fleeing was about one million. The uh, Hyksos fleeing uh, numbered about one million. The fleeing Israelites were chased by a pharaoh. Yes, indeed, the Hyksos as well were chased by a pharaoh. And who was he? Um, I'll put the name in the in the bottom there. Sorry. They see the sea drew uh, withdrew. Sorry, from the fleeing Israelites. The sea withdrew here again from the fleeing. Um, and sorry, this is also the the tsunami event, um, which in which. Um, geologically, ge geologically, yeah, the, the sea would have actually withdrawn into the ocean. Um, and, not the ocean, <laughs> you know what I mean, the big fat massive sea that, that we we're talking about here, the Mediterranean or the, uh, the Red Sea. Um, was the Red Sea? Was the Red Sea? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, the, the tsunami here would have been a the natural... Um, the thing there that would have happened because this the big uh, earthquake there would have you know what I mean Jesus Christ what's wrong the Egyptians destroyed many towns in Palestine the Hyksos were a large army on the retreat uh, some towns inevitably got destroyed um, they destroyed Jericho two both of these groups destroyed Jericho the shepherds then went to Jerusalem the Hyksos went to Jerusalem now 
this is rather interesting of course there are quite a few and rather specific parallels we can look at um, obviously she shepherd kings um, the large armies um, we have uh, astronomical documents and, and scientific documents from these two groups of people there um, the plagues the famines both afflicted both of these dynasties um, you know, it goes on and on about one million fleeing. Again, a rather specific number and a hell of a lot of people. Um, it is. It has been um, asserted quite a few times here by a lot of fairly maverick individuals, uh, and we don't know really why. I think it's obviously because of the Christian aspects of these stories that many historians didn't want to buck the the horse. The horse buck the trends so much through the 20th century and we're still uh, in some respects maybe controlled by christian uh, countries and personages there so they didn't want to make these connections so much well through the 20th century of course people did make these connections and they fit far better with the archaeological evidence and the um, and the the histories mm -hmm. that people like josephus and manitho um, gave us down the down the centuries there um we also in the hyksos um were the pesha you know the the locks uh, jewish locks um they're again an egyptian feature uh but the the hyksos uh used these as well and jews of course you know they're very jewish hyksos again same thing and of course the jews practice circumcision as well as the egyptians and clearly the the hyksos um so again the same stuff uh applies and please remember that we can't we don't know anything about the um the jewish patriarchs they are do not they completely evade us in the historical record mm -hmm. at the same time we have cities such as zoan um zoan in upper egypt this is very interesting. Uh, there are uh, other examples of this as well. Um, so here we will see a concatenation really of, of different pieces of evidence that converge on the, the, the assertion here, the theory, which I believe is no theory at all. I think it's, it's obviously fact that these two uh, groups, these two dynasties, if you like, were the were one and the same. And I'm going to show you in part two how the names of these patriarchs were very similar, if not indeed the same as the the chronologies of the um, of these pharaonic uh, dynasties. So we're going to have a look in the second part here at um, David and also Solomon, and we're going to start with Abraham, and we're going to look at the pharaohs and the the uh, sisters, brothers. Uh, uh, parents and so on of these pharaohs and we're going to see how they fit the um, old testament chronologies basically perfectly i hope you uh, hope this has been interesting and i will speak to you in a little while have a nice night thank you